Welcome back to XOR Engineer Training. This is part two, incident types and fields. In this video, we'll be adding the custom incident type to support our use case, as well as two custom incident fields to hold information from our alerts that are specific to that new incident type. To start, we'll create a new incident type for called XOR Engineer URL Alerts, and then we'll add two custom fields, one to hold the URL category and one to hold the suspicious URL. Both of these fields will be of type short text. Then lastly, we'll set up the indicator extraction rules for our custom incident type, ensuring that we only extract IOCs from the specific fields that we'll be mapping data into in the next video. For example, we'll be setting up extraction for URLs and domains from the suspicious URL field, IP addresses from the source IP, and email addresses from the source username. And with that, let's get to it. We'll start by adding our incident type. Uh, this can be done by going to settings, object setup, incidents, and types. Now you can leverage out of the box incident types for your use cases and customize these if required. For example, if you're building a phishing use case, we already have a phishing type out of the box that's part of our phishing pack. However, you'll note that for out-of-the-box types, you will see this lock icon next to the name. This means that it is using the settings that come from the XOR Marketplace. And should you wish to customize this type, you simply need to select it, hit Detach, and then it'll, it'll allow you to edit the settings for this specific incident type. You will see the unlock. This means that it will not be overwritten by any changes coming from the Marketplace, and you can edit this incident type change things like the playbook, the layout, and the extraction rules, which we'll be setting up in our custom use case. Wish to restore a, an incident type to its uh, default settings from the marketplace, you can simply again select it, hit reattach. Be aware that any things that you, anything you may have changed will get overwritten, but you may reattach it to restore it to the default settings from the marketplace. Now we're creating a custom incident type for our alerts, so we can do that and get started by clicking new incident type and giving it a name. We'll call this XOR engineer URL alerts. We can select a color um, for this incident type. We'll just do orange because we like orange. Now incident types within XOR control a number of different things. First of all, the default playbook that is executed when an incident of this type is created in XOR. This playbook would execute if the incident was created manually, or in our case, the alert was fetched from that our source integration and it would execute the playbook. We'll be building this playbook as part of the series, so we'll get back to setting this later. In addition, you can tell, tell the playbook to run automatically when the incident is created. This would be considered a best practice. This way our playbook can execute, perform any triage or remediation steps well before an analyst even reviews it. We can customize the layout that is associated with this incident type and something we will be doing in this series. Layouts can be useful to display important information to the analyst and it can be customized by incident type to display the information that is important to that type. Next, we can supply post-processing scripts, another script that we'll cover within this series. These scripts execute right before an incident is closed and can do a number of different things. You can provide an SLA for this incident for how long it should take from open to close. And this can be done by incident type as well. In our case, we don't have an SLA that our SOC has provided to us. So we'll leave this alone for now. Then lastly, we can define the indicator extraction rules that are used to extract IOCs from the incoming alert and from either fields or from the entire incident data. But before we can do that, we need to add our custom fields because the suspicious URL field, which we want to take URLs and domains from, currently doesn't exist within our XOR instance. If we search for it here, we don't see it. So let's start by adding those two fields, and then we'll come back and define our indicator extraction rules. For now, we're gonna hit save, and we'll pivot over to incident fields and add our custom fields. Pivoting over to the next panel for incident fields, uh, when working with fields, we recommend using out of the box if possible and only using custom fields when required. For example, our alert had a source username and source IP field. 
that we were going to capture that information from, and we can search the available field to see if we have something suitable already in XOR that we can use. For example, we already have a source username field. It is of type short text, and it is currently associated with all incident types within the system. This makes this a great candidate to store the information from our alert. Same thing, we might have the source IP field, and we can use this out of the box field, also associated with all types, to hold that information from the alert. Other fields like event ID and event type, we have out of the box as well, and we can use these to store the event type and the event ID from our incoming alert. Now we wanna have custom fields to hold the URL category and the suspicious URL from our alerts. We don't have anything suitable with an XOR, so we can always create a new field to hold that information. We'll select new fields, and we can begin adding our custom fields. Now in XOR, we have a number of different field types that are available to you as XOR engineers, depending on your use case. For example, the default field type is short text, but if you need analysts to pick an option, you might want to use something like single select, where the analyst can be provided a list of options from which to choose. We have multi-select fields as well, which are useful if you need to select more than one option. In addition, we have other field types like date time, or markdown fields, where you can even provide a template for analysts to uh, be prompted as to what they might need to put into this field. Now in this case, for our URL category field, we want this to be of type, type short text. So we can select that. We can give our field a name. This can be human readable, so we can put spaces in if we'd like. And this is how this field will be displayed to analysts on the things like the layout. However, as XOR engineers, one thing to be aware of, the machine name of the field, as you can see here, is all lowercase. And when using fields within playbooks or automations, this might be how we refer to it in order to set it, modify it, and so on. Now for fields, there's a number of different things we can do for them. Uh, we can go to the attributes section. We can specify scripts, which may run when a field value changes. We'll cover this later on in the course as well as scripts that may change how a field is displayed. Again, we'll cover that later on in the course as well. Now by default, our new field is associated with all incident types within the XOR. In this case, we could leave it if this is a field that might be used in other use cases, or we can just associate it with our uh, custom incident type that we created at the beginning of this video, which is what we're gonna do now. A Couple other options to be aware of, you can display them on closed forms or new edit forms or both if you want. We're gonna leave this as the default. If you only want the owner of an incident to be able to edit the field, you can select this here as well. And then for fields, the default is to make them available for searching with an XOR. If this is a field that we don't need to search on, um, we can turn this off, which makes it pretty efficient. However, we might want to search by the URL category, fish or malware or spam. So we're gonna leave that on as well. If the field is required on a new incident, we can also make it mandatory. Not in this case for us, so we can just leave that there. We can give this a description. Again, this might be helpful for, for folks that are using the field as to what it might contain. We can say the category of the URL from the URL alerts, and this might be fish, malware, spam. Excellent. So that's our URL category field. We can do that one more time and do the uh, suspicious URL field. All right, let's add our suspicious URL field. Once again, we'll click new field. Now this is used to capture a URL from our alert. However, this URL is likely malicious or suspicious and should be treated as such. One common mistake with URLs is placing them into the type of uh, field type of URL. This particular field is actually a clickable link and is better used for URLs that you want an analyst to be able to quickly pivot out to in order to uh, review the alert in the source system, for example. So a URL type field might contain something like the link to the alert in that source system like Cortex XDR. Um, and that's what the URL type field should be used for. In this case, we don't wanna put a potentially suspicious link into that type of field and have an analyst accidentally click on it. So we're gonna make this short text as well. Call this suspicious URL. Right, and we can give this a description as well. Not 
was allowed or blocked. We have the same options available to us. So in this case, we only want this to be associated with our XOR engineer uh, incident type. So we can choose that as well. We may want this available for search. So we'll leave that as the de default and we'll click save. And now we can basically take a look at our custom incident uh, fields. So we have URL category uh, and URL, a suspicious URL story that is associated with our incident type. At this point, we can define our indicator extraction rules and close out this video. Let's pivot back to our incident type, go back to the types menu. We can search for X or engineer and edit our incident type and go to indicator extraction rules. Now in XOR, indicators such as IP addresses, URLs, domains, and file hashes are extracted from data using regex. And these are then enriched by using configured threat intelligence integrations like VirusTotal or Autofocus to determine if an indicator might be good or suspicious or malicious. Now we'll deep dive into how this works as part of the series. In relation to incident types, we can configure how and what XOR extracts and enriches by defining indicator extraction rules on the incident type. In relation to incident types, extraction can occur either on incident creation or on field change once the incident has been created. And there are a number of different options that we can specify for how this works. For example, if we're looking at the incident creation options, we have three different options. They are inline, out of band and none. Inline is the system default. And basically inline extraction means that the playbook will not execute until the extraction and enrichment process has completed. You can consider this a blocking action. So the incident will be created, extraction and enrichment will happen as per the rules we're about to configure, and then the playbook will execute. Out of band, means that the playbook will execute and the process of extraction and enrichment will happen in parallel. Lastly, we can set, set extraction to be none. This is recommended if you do not need indicator extraction as part of the use case you are building. This speeds up your playbook as XOR does not need to go through the process of trying to extract and enrich IOCs from a use case where we don't actually need them. This saves your API calls and makes everything run very quickly. Now, indicators can be extracted from the entire raw incident, so we can tell it to extract the IOCs from all fields, or better practice is to extract specific indicators from specific fields. This helps eliminate false positives and what we're gonna be doing for our use case. All right, to set this up, uh, let's start with the suspicious URL field. We can simply search for it, it's a suspicious URL, and we can define the types of indicators that we wish to extract from this field on incident creation. Again, we're gonna leave this as inline to mean that these fields will be extracted and enriched before our playbook executes, and we'll leave on field changes out of band for the system default. So if this field changes and a new URL is placed, it will extract and enrich it out of band. Now, we have a couple different options. First of all, we can attempt to extract all indicators using regex, or better yet, we can supply the actual indicators that we know we're going to be putting into this field. In this case, we want to extract a URL type IOC, and we also want to extract the domain from that URL. So we can simply select the types of indicators that we know are going to be in this field to allow XOR to perform extraction and enrichment on them. For the source IP field, we can do the same thing. Again, we know that there will be an IP address in this field, and we can set this, this here as well. In the event there might be IPv6, we can also tell it to attempt to extract IPv6 indicators, um, but in our use case, they're always gonna be IPv4. And then lastly, the source username from our alert is an email address. It's always an internal email in our use case, so we might only want the email indicator for this use case. If we'd also like the domain from that email, we can specify domain if we like, but it's not required for our use case. Going back, we can take a look at our work. Suspicious URL, we're getting URLs and domains. Source IP, 
IP and IPv6, and then source username. We're getting the email indicators. Okay, click save. And we basically defined our instant indicator extraction rules on our instant type. So let's do a quick review of what we did in this, in this video. Incident types in Cortex XOR are the building blocks for our use cases. And remember that an incident type controls the following. First of all, the default playbook that is run when an incident of this type is created, the layout for the incident, incident SLAs, as well as indicator extraction rules that are done on incident creation or field change. Next, incident fields can contain the important information for the incident and can be used to drive our playbooks and display information to the analyst if required. When using incident fields, we recommend using out-of-the-box fields when possible, and you can use custom fields of many different types depending on your use case. Fields can be associated with all incident types with an XOR or associated to a specific int type or types. Next, indicator extraction can occur during incident creation or on field change and includes the following options. Inline extraction blocks execution of the playbook until the indicators are extracted and enriched. Use inline extraction when indicators and their enriched information is required as part of the playbook. Out of band performs the indicator extraction and enrichment process, but does not block execution of the playbook. You want to use this when the indicators and their information is not immediately required as part of the playbook. Lastly, none. None disables the indicator and extraction and enrichment process on incident creation. And if you do not need this process for the incident type or use case that you are building, it is considered best practice to disable it. This will make everything run much faster. Now, indicators themselves can be extracted from the entire raw incident and all fields but it is considered best practice to configure extraction of indicators from specific fields and for specific indicator types. This will help you eliminate false positive indicators as part of your use case and keep everything nice and clean. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.